Hi everyone, I played my um, first competitive game for over a month last night to the uh, Manchester Summer League playing for uh, Denton against Rochdale in the Cup and my opponent um, was Michael White and uh, no it's not that um, very strong FM sadly it's uh, a one four four grade so um, 3 points higher than me but I had the advantage of uh, White so it was going to be a tough close and complex game I guess then and I was on board 5 on a 6 board match and uh, I was looking to win this of course because um, I'm starting to sweat congresses again and I'll do videos of my um, Haywood games uh, this weekend then uh, another match and then um, Buxton games in a nice feed area congress so it should be fun and tough and complex I guess so anyway um, I kicked off with E4 and then, I, and then my heart sunk when I got E5 and after knight F3 my heart didn't sink, so got knight c6, and after bishop b5, my heart sunk um, to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean when he played knight f6, which of course is the Berlin Wall, which uh, I have at least uh, an early queen exchange is a very dry position with very little to play for. And um, I mean, Kramnik uses this to draw, draw all the time with, or at least to another ultra dull position with absolutely nothing happening, and it like, stops any hopes of hacking, that's for sure. So I castled. Did not know what I was doing. He took an e4, rook e1, knight d6, and now I thought it's mandatory to take on um, c6 now. And for some reason I actually cannot remember, despite being an open inferior titian, I cannot remember the main line at all. What queens come off? So, um, so some kind soul put down into the um, comments, and that'd be much appreciated. You know the line on the GM games, I like draw Nick and um, go play. My improvement for the next game is to take an e5, takes, takes. Bishop b7 and now in the move bishop f1, a nice aesthetically pleasing move, preserving the um, two bishops. But in the game, I lost the bishop here for not much compensation. It's bishop e7, d4. I do have this strong like knight out, well, kind of semi outpost compensation. Castles brought the knight in for my first um, long think of the game. By the way, in the summer league games, you only get an hour for 13 moves and then 15 minutes at rest of the game, so you, I was sweating some time pressure. Which is why I've been sweating loads of one minute online. Here with then Buxton are more slower, back Buxton's increments, I think. Check that. Then we played after his long, first long think, but Bishop f6. And I thought um, f4 looked a bit risky. Like, was it, like I would do a stonewall, but if I Bishop on d3, I'd try and stonewall attack, but can't in this position. Another alternative was rook e8, and then Bishop f5. It's just so easy to play this with black, I've already probably gone wrong, got all the engines of I rate is equal. Knight df3, knight f5. And I protected the pawn with c3. Bit of passive, but it was my first game back, so I wanted to be like solid rather than out and out hacking. I might hack in my Haywood games. Like I might have considered usually g4. <coughs> but the best move is to take an e5 and then have to rook takes, knight back. h3 protecting the pawn. And after f6, rook e1. H5 looks um, very awkward in this position for me to deal with, I'm trying to rip open my king, and it looks like um, what is going to be king is going to want to get in trouble. An alternative plan which I considered was to play uh, b3, and then like put the bishop on a2 or a3 or b2, and then maybe fought with c4, and then maybe, well not d5 because he got his dual pawns, but that was a possibility to consider as well, but didn't play. On c3, you put the bishop on e6. And now um, I fought for a bit and um, thought of, of playing h3 and then bishop f4 to give my um, bishop potential for treaty square and h2. So some um, good strategic thought there. So I went h3 and he played knight h4. Just probably trying to swap pieces off. I um, played bishop f4 and now he went bishop d5 which was the move that I feared but thankfully it's not that amazing. An alternative was knight takes f3 check. Queen takes f3. Rook e8, knight d3, and bishop e7. With white's better formation counteracted by black's um, bishop pair in quite an open position. And the chances are probably about equal, although I would actually prefer the bishop pair. Bishop d5, and now he instituted threats on g2. I decided it was pretty much mandatory to take an h4. Bishop takes f4, and now knight g4, which isn't quite the best move. I was just trying to get to um, e3. And also get rid of his um, light squared bishop because. When your opponent's got two bishops and you've got one, 
the potential match winner is the one that you haven't got and it's quite good in this position so I thought um, I'll make it my mission to try and get rid of it the move which I actually considered is actually given the, the other move, the main move I considered was actually given the best on the edge, which was um, Queen D3. For a start, I didn't actually like look at um, Queen F6, hitting the bishop, and then kind of like mate threats on F2 and stuff like that. But I can just actually win material with G3, and Knight D7 just wins an exchange, which I somehow overlooked, which shows how rusty I was because I'd not played for that long. I need to get these cobs cobwebs off, cobwebs off before Haywood. And, but the, a good move actually, which is one which the reason I didn't really play it was f5 because although it looks a bit weak then it maybe threatens g5, g4 for a start I have to say c4, I think I would put bishop e4 and queen c3 is a very smallish to white actually so knight g4 queen d7 just because you knew I was going to come to f5 so he's protected the square knight e3 also cleared the way for rook f8 now the best move given, which goes to a small edge for white, is to actually play queen g4, and after queen takes g4, h takes g4. Because now um, c7 is on pre, and if something passive like rook a c8, then white can play knight f5, bishop back to f6, so g5, bishop e6, knight h6 check, very tactical, takes, takes, and it's bishop's opposite colour, but black has got a fractured pawn structure and he's going to drop a pawn, I think, in h6. So if white lets c7, black lets c7 go with bishop b6, the best move to rather take is to play on g5, which is advantage to white. So I missed a decent chance there, instead went queen h5, it got the bishop back, and now after knight takes d5, c takes d5, my opponent off the draw would just move 18, while I was thinking. And he actually has got a point because the pawn structure is now completely balanced, the bishops are the same colour, and White has got an absolute minuscule advantage, but there's really no any chances. And I considered was thinking rook e5, hitting d5, but if you just play c6, protecting it, and also um, there's some tactics with bishop d6, rook takes d5, but um, g6, and I could play queen f3, which I didn't quite see when I was looking at it. Rook e6 takes, takes, and um, white is a pawn up. But of course, I didn't really look at it because you can just, even if the tactics work, you can just play c6. So I went rook e3, just piling up an e file, bishop f8, rook a e1, and then he took. Rook takes, I considered f takes briefly, but I didn't have enough time to consider it. c6, and now there's just nothing really, and he's just going to play for a draw now. I went queen back to e2, which is bad because, well, if he'd been a bit more ambitious, he could have played queen f5. Although it doesn't quite win material at this position. Like bishop g3, then you think he can play queen check, queen takes a2, but white wins with rook e8. Rook takes e8, queen takes e8, and there's no way to stop um, bishop d6 and queen f8, mate. But queen f5 is a good active move that le at least equalises. But he plays g6, maybe trying to put the bishop on g7, but he can't because of rook e7. I played bishop g5, trying to take advantage of these weak and dark squares. Played rook b8. Interesting, which I'd missed was queen f5, hitting the bishop and threatening queen b1 takes a2. Because I haven't got bishop d6 anymore. Say so bishop h4, we have check, king h2. And black can get equality with check, bishop back, takes, 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 check. And this is going to be a job by perpetual. If he tries to munch the a2 pawn, this loses to a beautiful variation. You play rook e8, takes, takes, and now it seems that king g7 holds, but now comes the beautiful move. If you want to try and spot it, please stop the video now, help the preview tactics. Bishop f6. Bishop is taken, then we have the mating one with the queen and pawn. King h6, then we just take the bishop and mate with a pawn. And if the king goes back, then bishop b7 wins on the spot as well. So bishop f6 leads to a forced mate. And if king g7 isn't played, then bishop b7 is going to win the bishop and also mate. So that'd be game over. But he played rook b8. I played h4, supporting the bishop and getting out easy tactics. Bishop d6, 
I put it B4, Bishop F8, A4, and you just played A6. But I'm not sure B5 is a threat anyway, because I do eventually play and it doesn't do it does absolutely nothing. Bishop F4, Rook C8, Bishop E5, just. Well, we're, two, we're getting 2 0 up in the match now as well, so Rook E8. I put Bishop F4, Rook takes E3, and on last move with 4 seconds left. Because the time kill was just too fast. I decided to unbalance it and take the F pawn, which doesn't really change much. I've now got a stronger set, uh, more pawns in centre, but he's got more pawns on king side. Plays queen e6, b5, takes, takes, f5. Just, and I play b6, a horrible move, which might give him winning chances now because his pawn's just weak. But then maybe it was takes, takes. And then queen a6, but then he just plays queen d7, and there's just no way through at all. But the b6, he actually goes for my pawn immediately with bishop e7, which hits h4, and friends bishop d8 takes b6, which looks good, but I actually could have got an edge now with the move queen a2, trying to come into a8 with check, and, if, and he has to play bishop f8, queen a8, and then queen e7, bishop g5, queen g7. I mean, there's still no way through, but I forced them into a bit of passivity, and there might be more chance of a mistake. We're both only about 10 minutes left at this point. So it'd be like, it could be hard to defend. And plus, if ever win B7, then I'm automatically going to win because um, the B pawn or queen. But I instead played uh, H5, bishop D8, takes, takes, queen B2, rather passive, you see. He's removed his king. Bishop back to e5. To stop any like, you know, g5s and queen takes e3 checks. And now he missed his own good chance now with bishop f6. And that's just, he actually wants to pawn this because it, if I take them, I have queen takes e3, king h2, check, takes bishop, but after queen a3, I think my queen's gonna like come in and maybe win a pawn or. Gets a spectral check or something, so it's a bit probably still drawn, but he could have got, got his own winning chances there. I played g5, he played g5 instead, he's just playing for a draw. King f2, takes an e3, g4, now g3, and then I saw queen h6 and off of the draw. And he had a few, I had six minutes to his tank, so I was like getting even a little long on time, and he actually accepted it. I'm not sure if Queen H6 wins or anything, but it does look quite strong for him to come in winning the Queen and also um, adds force to the E3 pawn, so that's why I thought after a draw and he was 2-0 um, up in the match and went on to win 4-2 to go through to the next round of Cup against Rochdale. So um, it was quite a good result and he's slightly high rated and he, he, only, he, he played for a draw to be honest. It's not much I could have done. Typical Berlin Wall nonsense. Play for a draw. So um, anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this game, and I hope my um, Hayward game is a bit more exciting. So if you want to see him, then uh, please subscribe, and um, you'll see him. And for now, um, please leave in the comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.